Have you ever heard the saying, when you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready? Well, this saying applies to your credit score. Stick around to the end of this video and I'm gonna share a hack with you that you can use to improve your credit score. Most people don't know about this one, so you wanna check it out. What's up guys? I go by Sir O'Neill, AKA Working Man T. Troy, and I bought my first home and multi-unit rental property in Brooklyn, New York by the age of 26. And I created this YouTube channel so that you can do the same. The third step in the home buying process is building and improving your credit score. In my opinion, this is more like a prerequisite. So if you already have good credit, great. If you have no credit or bad credit, you're gonna need to do some work, like the most of us. In the home buying process, lenders look at credit to determine if they wanna take on the risk of giving you a loan to buy your home. You pay back the loan via your mortgage payments, which are paid monthly or the life of the loan. So that could be either 15 years or 30 years. The lower your credit score, the less likely a lender is to approve you without making you pay additional fees to get a loan. These fees can be very expensive, like thousands of dollars. The better your credit score, the more likely lenders are to fight each other for your business. Literally, this happened to me. Typically, lenders will give a decent interest rate to bars with the credit score above 680 depending on the lender. To get the best interest rate, you want to have a credit score of 740 or higher. You might ask, but what if my credit score is not the best? There's actually several ways you can improve your credit score depending on the reason why it's not in the best shape. You gotta find out the following. Is it because you don't have any credit history? In this case, I recommend doing two things. First, you can open a revolving line of credit to establish your credit history. Opening a credit card is usually the easiest way to do that. Try your best not to pay your credit card bill late. And if you ever pay late, Never, and I mean never, pay more than 30 days late because it can negatively impact your credit score. Second, if you have a family member who has good credit history, you could ask them to add you as an authorized user to their oldest credit card with a good payment history so that you can inherit the good um, credit history. This is the quickest way to establish good credit without doing anything in as little as 30 days. Unfortunately, most of us don't have that good-hearted family member that we can rely on to help establish our credit. So therefore, we gotta take the long route. After opening your credit card, I recommend using no more than 10% of the credit limit and paying off your full balance each month. If you cannot pay off your full balance, make sure that your statement balance is no more than 10% of your credit limit. Simply put, if your credit card limit is $1,000, your statement balance should be no more than $100 each month. And this is because the statement balance is what's gonna be reported to the credit bureau. So you wanna keep that statement balance as low as possible. These two steps will help you to be on the track to establishing good credit history in just a few months. What if you have bad credit? In this case, I recommend finding out the exact reason why you have bad credit. So that might require you to go on an app like Credit Karma, link in the description below by the way, to see what are the factors contributing to your bad credit score. A few common reasons why many people have bad credit are high utilization. This means you're using too much of your credit line each month. So in this case, you wanna cut back and use less than 30% of your credit limit, which is the general rule of thumb. But I like to be more conservative and use no more than 10% of my credit limit each month. So if it's possible for you, I recommend doing the same. This might mean using your credit card to make only one transaction such as paying your phone bill each month then paying the full balance of the credit card each month. Too many hard inquiries. A hard inquiry is simply a ding that you get on your credit report when a lender reviews your credit because you apply for some form of credit. If you have more than five hard inquiries, this could be pulling your credit score down. The classic example when most people get a lot of hard inquiries on their credit report in a short time period is when they buy a car through a dealership and the dealership shop around their credit with multiple banks and lenders hoping that one of the banks or lenders will approve the loan. This literally happened to my brother. The problem with this is that for each lender that denies your, your application, your credit score decreases about five points. So this could be horrible if 10 lenders review your credit and all deny your application. Your credit score could decrease 50 points just like that. Here's the secret to having these hard inquiries removed. 
The first step is to go to a website called SageStream and here you can freeze your credit. The second step is to go to AlexisNexis website and here you can also freeze your credit. Third, you're going to write a letter to Experian, Equifax and TransUnion to dispute the hard increase because technically you did not authorize the dealership to run your credit with all those lenders. The credit bureaus will use SageStream and AlexisNexis to verify the increase but if you freeze your credit, they will not have access to your credit report and most likely remove the hard increase. Shout out to Noelle Randall for giving out this tip on her channel because I did not know about this one. I sent her video to most of my friends and my brothers so they can all try it out. I provided the link in the description to her video below so you can check it out. If you're enjoying this video up until this point, please be sure to leave a like and a comment of your thought. Now, what if you have bad credit because one of your old accounts has been reported to collections? What should you do in that case? If you did not pay a bill and it was sent to a collection agency, you can actually have it removed from your credit report without actually paying the bill. I literally helped my mom with this and have an unpaid debt removed from her credit report, all by disputing it on her own. However, if you have a really large debt or multiple debt, it may be worth it to have a credit restoration company dispute the debt on your behalf. If you're going to use a credit restoration company, it's important to note that when debt collectors call you, do not speak with them to confirm your identity and confirm the debt. Just hang up because they need to prove that the debt is yours. Instead of speaking on the phone with the debt collectors, have the credit restoration company dispute the debt on your behalf. The fee that they charge might be far below what you owe the collection agency. Please remember that not all credit restoration companies are created equal. So please do your homework when choosing a credit restoration company. Make sure you understand what they're charging exactly and what they will be doing to have the debt removed. With that being said, I think we went over enough ways to start building and improving your credit so that you can get the best interest rates possible when purchasing your first home or rental property. Even if you're not looking to buy a house right now or anytime soon, it's always good to make sure that you have great credit because you never need it until you actually need it. And I know many people can agree with that. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content. Also, if you like me to create a more detailed video on credit, let me know in the comment section below. Alright, peace. One.